in restaurants. Since I started this July, I haven't gone to any restaurant or fast food, but I know that some people are going to have to. And um, but the general rule of thumb is just avoid. Like I, the people that I know that are going to restaurants and a lot and eating out, they're generally heavier and unhealthier. It's just so it's it, you can do it. You can ask for special meals to be made. You can find a you know a baked potato at Wendy's or whatever. But you know the odds are against you. The, and you're there. The temptations there. They, a lot of stuff's not made very healthily. And you're um, you know if you. If you're going to go to a restaurant or meet, go to a, a dinner occasion, I would eat, eat at home, eat some potatoes, get filled up, and then just have something small when you're there. Because um, it's just going to be tricky to find stuff that you didn't put a lot of oil on or stuff. But you can do it. You can ask and try to be, you know, you're going to stand out with the people you're with and you're not always going to be able to get those alternatives. So generally speaking, I would try to avoid that those situations, try to meet people you know, outside of a food establishment. If you want to chat with people, why do you have to, you know, do it at the at a restaurant? So there's lots of other places to meet. Um, a lot of, sometimes there'll be a lot of excuses just from the, the, the resistance to doing the, the lifestyle. So you'll be saying, you know, there's allergies and sensitivities to things and you know, I'd, I'd like it to, if you have a problem with a certain potato, you know, white potato, try red or russets or try um, sweet potato or, you know, if you have trouble with all sorts of potatoes, try try rice, um, quinoa. There's all sorts of things. Pastas, there's all sorts of different types of pastas. Um, you just got to be persistent and really try. Like, don't just give up and say, I, I can't eat this stuff because I'm, I have issues. Um and those things are really tough to determine because there's a lot of foods that we eat. But I, I would say that, um, you know, just work hard to find alternatives and make sure that you actually do have an issue with those because, um, you know, there's stuff in, there's flour and in you know, all sorts of things. So if you have issues with pasta, you know, there was probably flour in desserts and things like that. Um, and there's, you know, you can find alternative uh, ways to make some things. So be persistent and really try to uh, to find alternative starches that might work for you. Um, I mentioned a little bit about social situations, you know, as far as fat food and that, but if you're actually going to family, you know, family gatherings and friends and stuff, a lot of people are like, well, these people are going to want me to eat this or that. What I found is if you just don't say anything and you just eat what you want, a lot of people don't even notice if you, if you don't make a big deal about it. But if, if people are giving you a hard time, I would really try to stand up for yourself and be be a leader. Be be confident in what you're doing. I mean, people like, I've had people make jokes and, and they're not in great shape and I just kind of smile, you know, because it's like, you know, I'm not going to really take advice from, from this type of a person. And uh, I, I, I advise that you just be confident, have that quiet confidence. You don't even have to say much, but just... Don't give in and eat stuff because someone else wants you to do it. It just doesn't, uh, it's not the way to go. Um, just a couple of final things here. There's a lot of people that are in the 80 10 10 fruit, raw food, that type of thing. And when they look at people like Durian Ryder, who's um, exercising a ton, you know, he just recently put some stuff up where he's biking hundreds of kilometers a day. I mean, it's like 7,000 calories in a day. And he, he has to eat a lot. He has to eat. He has to drink juices and blend some banana and date smoothies. And part of that is getting him going in the morning. And then, you know, he has to keep eating that stuff. So the, the exercise, he, you know, he was saying that the exercise is driving him to eat more calories. And most people couldn't do that. But there's people that email me that, you know, gain weight on banana date smoothies. It's pretty easy to, to eat more than you need. Um, it's not going to make you magically get up and exercise it all off and give you all this amazing energy like people are talking about. Um, you might have a job and you, you, don't, you don't have time. So eat the, eat the food whole. So eat bananas. If you want to eat bananas, eat you know dates. Um, eat them whole. But basically, if you blend things, it's, it's breaking down the the fiber and that, and it makes it easier to overconsume. I'm not saying that, you know, it's bad in the sense that it does something, you know, to the, to the food, but what I'm just saying is 
you look at like a, a blender full of banana dates, it's, you know, over a thousand calories easily. Um, and so people like Jeff Novick and that are advising people to eat their food whole. So it's going to digest slowly in your system. It's got the fiber and the water and everything in there and just, it's going to reduce the amount of calories that you can eat. Like if you eat natural whole foods, you'll have some sense of how much is enough. It's, it's a natural instinct. When we eat foods that are high in fat and with all sorts of hidden sugars and things like junk food and fast food, we, we can't really sense the, uh, the caloric value there. And we also are lacking in some of the, the nutrients, so we, we tend to overeat. But I think that um, just eat the food whole. And you have to look at people that are exercising a lot. You know, they, you don't eat, not everybody's going to eat the same amount of calories. So unless you're doing long distance runners, you know, and that's driving you to, to consume more calories, just eat the calories whole. You don't need to be drinking fruit juices and blending smoothies all the time. Um, if you eat low calorie density food, so you got your salads, fruit, vegetables, starches, legumes like beans. You know, you're getting, with beans and that, you're getting close to, you know, kind of a, a good calorie density. Be a little careful with the pastas and the, the breads. I mean, they're a good food, the whole grain, stuff like that. But basically, you know, it's getting up in the higher calorie density areas and um, that the total calories do, do matter. So... Um, when you're when you're listening to people, whether it's doctors or authors in books or whoever, you got to be skeptical. Don't just you know the news media says something's good or bad. You know, be skeptical. The best thing to do is to look at the science. So a lot of the um, authors and, and doctors will talk will reference studies, and you you got to start take some time and look at the studies a bit. They're not too bad if you look at some of the Look at how the study was conducted. Look at some of the results, and and just question things. Um, don't don't just accept what somebody tells you. Even even me. So, you know, I expect people to look at a lot of the things that I'm talking about, um, and just experiment. Like, you could just eat start just eat a bunch of potatoes for lunch and dinner, and at like a big a, a good portion of it, even if no matter what else you're eating. Just eat, just eat a big pile of potatoes, you know, no fat potatoes and no fat gravy, and see how fill, filling it is. And um, do that for a while, you know, give it a chance and see how you do. It's not going to be a major change to just throw in a whole bunch of potatoes to your diet, and uh, you know that's going to sort of crowd out some of the other higher density calorie foods that you normally eat, like the fats and, and, the, and the oils and stuff like that. Okay, so I just wanted to give some tips, uh, some practical advice that I think uh, will help you guys. You know, like I say, we're eating mashed potatoes and french fries, like baked fries and tacos and chili and soups and salads and cereal and all sorts of great stuff. And it's, a, it's comfort food, it's tasty, there's a mix of raw and cooked, it's not a big deal. And uh, people that are fruitarian or people that are even meat and dairy can, can really get on board on this and uh, have all the benefits. So hopefully some of this will help you. Um, make sure when you're weighing yourself that you're looking at not just your water weight. So when you store, when your, your carbs are stored in your muscles like glycogen and that can store water as well. So you really got to try to check your body fat um, if, if that's what you're trying to reduce is is getting a uh, body fat monitor either on a scale or one of the handheld Omron ones, some body measurements with the tape measure. Um, there's calipers you can get. So, and there's, you know, there's more fancier tests that you can do, but look at your clothes. You know, if you're losing, your clothes are going to get looser and things like that. There's, there's visual aspects to it too. So the scale can be deceiving. So my advice is, you know, maybe weigh yourself once a week. Um, I, I don't do that as much as I should, but measure yourself once a week and as well as the body fat and track, you know, track the progress uh, because the scale can be deceiving at, at times as far as, you know, what people gain. So a lot of water weight and stuff like that. So, all right. 
So um, good luck with that and let me know what you think and ask 